how are my YouTube friends doing today? And I am bored. It's 10 p.m. here, Wisconsin. And I just received the PSA 5.56 18-inch upper with an FM barrel. And I'm itching to get the reloads done for this ASAP. Let me make sure we are live here. Everything's running smooth. Looks like we are. Let me get the chat boards up here so I can see who's logging in. And if you are out there watching, make yourself known. Jump in the chat board. And like I said, we are getting the reloads going for the PSA 5.56 18 inch upper with an FN cold hammer forge barrel. And I plan on getting this done, at least the first part here, very, very soon. And I don't know why, but my internet is ungodly slow. Jair Bear Tactical's rolling in saying, good evening, Todd. How are you doing today? And how are you doing this night, I should say? <laughs> and for some reason, my internet is ungodly slow. I don't see my uh, video here. Here we go. That's better. All right. So if you are out there, smash that uh, like button. John Parsons rolling in saying hello, everyone. Jeff, Jeff Calvert's rolling in saying hello. And if you didn't see the earlier live video that I did today, and that was on... Receiving the PSA 5.56 Chrome uh, Cold Hammer Forge FN 18 inch upper. It's got the F FM barrel on it, and I'm itching to get the reloads done on this so I can get going on shooting this ASAP and get the load develop done for ASAP. And I already had a hundred total pieces of Lake City brass already decapped and cleaned. This yet yeah, this still needs to be annealed and sized, and that's what I plan on doing tonight. And I going to get that done and get this in the wash. And I figured, heck, you know what? I'm bored. It's ten o'clock. Uh, I figured I'd get this done so I can get going on this right away within the next day or two. Um, if you guys have been following my 6.5 Grendel series, I got those reloads done. Hopefully it's going to be nice tomorrow and I can get those shot on paper and see how that load development works out. Um, we got five watching right now and we got good old Jer Bear Tactical in the house, John Parsons in the house, Jeff Calvert's in the house. And Jer Bear Tactical says, I think we're all a little poor, man. Isn't that the freaking truth? Um, but if you guys didn't see uh, today's earlier live video, we used the test long bore scope and we checked out the bore on the new upper that I just received from PSA. And that is the 18 inch cold hammer forged um, FM barrel. And I got that actually on the lower that I'm using on the 6.5 Grandol. And that's also came with the PSA uh, 1 to 6 power SFP scope and the PSA custom QD 30 millimeter high mount, the one piece AR mount. And initially I'm not going to use that scope in the first few parts here while I'm doing low development. I'm probably going to put my 4 to 16 Vortex Viper PST on there uh, to do load development. But once that's done, I plan on putting that back on Some, somewhat of a you know, a DMR type uh, rifle situ situation. And like I said, this upper is very special. It has the FN uh, Cold Hammer Forge 5.56 barrel on it with a one and seven twist. And I plan on reloading for that with 68 grain 
bolt tail hollow points, 75 grain bolt tail hollow points. I'm planning on doing a bunch of fodder rounds just to break in the barrel. That's 55 grain full metal jackets. And also some 55 and 60 grain VMAX. So I plan on reloading about 60 fodder rounds of full metal jacket just to break in the barrel before I start the load development. Another 10 of these to see how they group once I clean the bore after the 50 initial rounds just to break in that bore. Um, and hopefully she starts printing right away. And being that it's a one to seven twist, it's most likely gonna favor these heavier bullets, the 75 grain and 68 grain bullet tail hollow points. And I figured, what the hell, I might as well try the VMAX that perform well on my other ARs, but with that being said, those ARs have a one and eight twist. And I got a gut feeling that these aren't gonna work so well in this particular upper because it's a one and seven twist. I think they're gonna favor the 75 or 68 grain bolt tail of hollow points. And I hope they do actually, because it would be awesome to run this out the distance, like 600 yards, and we have a 600 yard range on the other side of town. So, but initially um, I got a hundred pieces here of brass. Like I said, it's already decapped and already cleaned. So I figured I'd just get this annealing and sizing done and get rolling with a series right away. And um, yeah, so let's get this going. Uh, let's see who's logging in here. And got about nine watching. If you guys are out there, uh, make yourself known in the chat board, especially if you got any questions on annealing or sizing. 556 or 223, whatever. Um, Good old OCD Outdoors is here. Thanks for joining us, my friend. And I'm going to just use my do-it-yourself annealer. And if you've never seen the video on this, I have a video with a parts list in the description box. And I'm pretty sure most of you guys have seen this. And you know I use the GLOW method. I don't use Temple Act. And everyone's got a different method. Their madness It's just what I do. Um, but like I said, if you're just joining us, we are... Reloading for this PSA 556 AR firearm. And like I said, I'm throwing this on my F Cancer lower that I'm actually using currently for my 6.5 Grendel. And I'm really, really excited about it. And what I really like about this is it actually has a heavy barrel. It's a heavy barrel profile from the chamber to the gas block. And then it has a medium contour up to the muzzle. And it's very similar to my Rock River Arms ATH, the stainless steel barrel. It's an absolute track tack driver. And I'm hoping this performs just as good, if not better. And hopefully with that FM barrel it makes the difference, but we'll see. Um, and actually, uh, yeah, OCD <laughs> Outdoors. Nice way to have the rifle in the video, exactly. I could show a picture all day long. Uh, I actually have it sitting right over here. I wish I could show it to you guys, and it's pretty spectacular. Um, but, yeah, I plan on moving that lower and the scope that we were, have been using in 6.5 Grendel series over to that. And I got one more part of that 6.5 Grendel series, and then we're going to move on from that, and I'm going to just concentrate on this. And if you guys missed today's earlier live event... Um, but, 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 like I said, we bore scoped that firearm and we checked it out with a test on bore scope. And it's a really cool video. Not only we bore scope that uh, 18 inch uh, FM barrel, but we also checked out the 6.5 Grendel barrel um, that I'm sure most of you guys have already seen. So, anyway, let's get this going. This is going to be a, a long adventure. I'm bored and I figured I'd get this going. So, with that said, I got my test brass here. I'm sure most of you guys know how I already nail. And I use test brass. I use what's called the glow method. And all right. And that's how I set up the torch, the flame, the length of the flame, the position of the flame, the heat of the flame, and the speed of the timer. And I'm gonna try my best to get this. And I gotta talk somewhat quietly because my family's sleeping. <laughs> so you guys are joining me tonight. So 
Uh, so like I said, if you're out there and you're watching, join, join in the chat board. And uh, if you guys got any questions, anything on reloading, let them rip and I'll try my best to answer them. Um, but yeah, let's get this going. And I'm going to get this flame going here. And I'm sure most of you guys have seen this already. I like to get about a one inch flame. Maybe up and close and personal. So I get about a one inch flame. And I suppose it would probably help if I plug this damn thing in, huh? <laughs> Uh, that's awesome. Let's see here. Uh, where is my plug? I suppose I should have had this done before I started. Well, hey, at least you know it's live. <laughs> uh, that's awesome. If I can just use my needle-aids, I wonder if that will work. It definitely works. It works for me. Sorry about that, guys. All right, let's try this again. Let's get this flame going. Said if you're out there, you got any questions on reloading or kneeling or sizing, let them rip. Uh, so Otter saying, based on your setup, would you say the amp is a big waste of money? And absolutely not. I would 100% uh, get the amp if you can afford it. If you could afford that amp, I would get it in a heartbeat. Matter of fact, if I had the money to blow, who knows my what I might do with this government stimulus check? I don't know. I don't know. I, I like using this these flame ones. It's just fine. But man, if you want the best of the best, you want it scientific and annealing done to the T and perfect. Those guys have zeroed that annealing science to a, a perfection. You really can't beat that amp annealer, annealing made perfect. And if you guys aren't familiar what that is, that is an annealing made perfect. It's an induction annealer. And you can just Google that, amp annealer or annealing made perfect, and it is really, really hard to beat. And those guys really know their stuff. So let's get this torch going here. Get about a one inch flame. We're doing 5.56. Five, I don't need a super hot flame on this. It's a, probably a little less than an inch, probably about seven eighths of an inch. I've mentioned this before, uh, when it comes to the flame, there is a hotter inner blue flame and an outer flame. It's hard to capture that on video, but there is a, an outer flame and a hotter blue inner flame, which you can definitely say an inner blue flame. And I like to get that a little less than an inch, and I like to get the tip of that flame. I have that tip of the flame about a quarter of an inch off the neck, and this is my test brass, by the way. And I have that tip pointing right where the neck meets the shoulder. So if the tip of this scissors is the tip of that blue inner flame, it's about right there. So right where the neck meets the shoulder, and I do the glow method. I'm sure most of you guys have already seen this before. So let me get this tripod a little bit out of my way here. And all we're going to do right now is I'm going to use this test brass. This has already been annealed a billion times, and I just use this to set the flame and the speed. I'm not going to use my real brass yet, the actual brass I'm going to reload. I'm just going to use the test brass initially to set the location of the flame and the speed of the drum. So let's get going on this, but in order to do this, and initially set the location. And I'm gonna leave the lights on for this. And I'm gonna slow this down. Let's grab another piece of test brass. We're just setting the location of the torch right now.
It doesn't matter if I over anneal this because this is just test brass. I'm just using the test brass to set up the initial location of that flame. Once I get that set up, I'm going to turn the lights down, we're going to check the glow method, and then we're going to get going. So that looks just about right. You can see it's way too hot. We're definitely going to speed that up. And this is where I need to dim the lights. I don't want to dim this down too much. But just enough to see the glow. Grab some more test brass. And I'm going to look for the glow. Maybe you can see this on camera. Get this about right there. It's definitely way too hot. I need to speed this up. Maybe back this off just a little bit. About right, quarter of an inch. Okay. That's going way too hot. That's pretty hard to see on camera. Let me get you closer. And that's just about right. It just starts to glow. The second it glows, it only takes a half a second. You get it out of the flame. That's way too hot. Let's speed this up. Remember, this is just test brass. Slow this down. Let me get the timer in here so you can see the timer. Ooh, and that's just about right. Let's try one more piece. All right. So I think I need to slow that down just ever so slightly. Try one more piece and then we're going to move on to the actual reloaded brass. And that's just about right. So that looks good. So I'm going to dump this in my glass bowl. And we're going to try some of the actual brass that we're going to reload. Now, once I get to this point, I gotta make sure I don't touch this torch. This torch is just sitting on my bench. All right, that looks pretty good. I think I need to slow this down ever so slightly. it down just a little bit more. Now this is pretty clean brass. It's definitely going to show annealing marks pretty good. And I think that's just about right. Now that's pretty hard to show in the video. Um, but at least on my end I can definitely see that. And that just starting to glow. The second it starts to glow I get it out of the flame. So let me put the lights back on here. Let me grab one of these pieces of brass. Not too hot. And you can see that annealing marks about a quarter of an inch down, which is absolutely perfect. So let me grab the other pieces here. Now I gotta make sure I don't touch this annealer or the torch. Once I get this set, I've got to make sure I don't touch it. Because if it moves a little bit, it's going to move away from the brass. And we've got a hundred pieces to go. If you guys got any questions, let them rip.
I'm gonna try my best to kneel and talk at the same time. Maverick Angler as well. I've never seen a channel like this. Please do more weekly. Very educational. I want to, I want to do this. Check out my videos, man. I got a ton of videos. Uh, very informative. I hope they help. Boys Axe just rolling in saying, hey, Todd. Mr. Parts for sale. Pitch and gunpowder may help. I don't think so. <laughs> uh, uh, Tim Davis in the house saying, good evening, everyone. Steel CA is in the house. Some party round two. All right, let's keep on going. If you guys got any questions, let them rip. And yeah, this is the do it yourself annealer. And you can make this for roughly about 100 bucks. I got a video in my video list, just search for do-it-yourself, D-I-Y, annealer. Make sure I'm still live here. Got to parting my uh, video feed, my Video will stop here for a second. Sorry about that, guys. Make sure you're still there. So my battery went dead. Sorry, let me get a fresh battery on this phone. Sorry about that. So John Parsons asked him, is it worth reloading nine millimeter? Well, if you would have asked me that two months ago, I would have said probably no. <laughs> Let's see what's going on with my internet here. Sorry about this. Internet. My battery died on my phone charger. Hopefully we're good there now. But yeah, John Parsons is probably not... It's probably worth reloading 9mm now because it's so possible to get. And it's so damn expensive and everyone's price gouging everyone because it's possible to get 9mm. So I... If you would ask me that, probably... Oh, one month ago, I probably said no. <laughs> uh, Swords ass is saying if you pass bullets, yeah, passing bullets definitely helps. It just really got to make sure you stock up on the, the main cartridges here when they're available at a cheap price, especially shipped. Um, Yeah, Jibber Tactical, it, it is really, it is all about if you find it worth it or not. You know, it's just like, you know, some guys give me crap for not uniforming the flash holes. I don't know, I just don't find it necessary, but some guys do. It's just all about finding your own method to your madness, that's for sure. Cam Cam 4.3 is going in the house saying, hello, sir, hello, everybody. John Pierce is saying, I only reload shot shells. You know, I'm more of a precision long range rifle shooter. So we got about 50 more to go, and it takes about five seconds a piece. Let's count this next one off here. 
one thousand, two one thousand, three one thousand, four one thousand, five. So let me show you the kneel. You can actually see the kneeling marks developing on this as it gets annealed. Let me show you this here. See that? So if you want a consistent anneal, you really need to have a machine that gets that brass out of the flame at a particular time. And it is all about consistency. If you want a consistent headspace bump, man, I tell you, it really is all about consistent annealing. So Maverick is asking any recommendations on which press you prefer from your experience. So with that said, if you're going for the utmost precision, I'd probably get a single stage press. And if I was to start over and I was only going to get a single stage press, I'd probably get a Redding turret press. Um, if you want more of a progressive press, I'd probably look at Dillon, something like a Dillon 750 or if you really want to pump out some freedom, I'd probably look at the probably the Dillon 1050. And if you really want to pump out some ultra freedom, get the Del the Dillon 1050 with an Autobot, and uh, life will be perfect at that time. <laughs> <laughs> Kate's genius loves talking about my glasses. So these are actually safety glasses, they're not sunglasses. And I've always said this, if you're in the reloading room, you better make sure you've got your glasses on, especially when you're doing another plane. Uh, John Parsons is saying he's looking at the Dillon 550. And I think that's a good option. You might want to look at that 750 that they just came out with. Um, you know, I obviously use the Hornady Lock and Load Press, and that's a fine press, especially if you're kind of strapped for money. And I don't feel a need to move away from it. I plan on using it in the future. Last for one Andy's rolling in the house. We got about 45 people watching right now. So we are annealing 5.56 Lake City brass so I can size it. And we, I feel like I'm under the gun to get some reloads done for this new. PSA 5.56 upper that I just got that has an 18 inch cold hammer forged FM barrel. And that's why I'm doing this. Well, I like go gate for Junior. Yeah, I know you're just messing with me, bud. Uh, so of course, that's in John to each his own. I have two 550Bs and they put out more ammo than I shoot. I think that's the truth. So, it just depends on what you're doing. If you want to precision reload. You want the utmost accuracy, you're probably going to want a single stage. If I was to go single stage, I'd actually look at the Redding turret press, the T7. And that would probably be my next press. Um, being that I already have a progressive press for if I need to progressively reload pistol ammunition. So we are getting to the tail end here. You can see how fast this is even with a single feed, do it yourself annealer. Obviously I got the annealese over here with a hopper. I just figured I'd use this, being that we used the annealese last time. We're getting close. Now I'm gonna show you here when we're done how super consistent all of this annealing is. But yeah, if you guys can afford it, like I've said this before, I'll say it again, buy the best equipment that you can afford. And if you can afford an amp, you and make perfect, that's exactly what I would get for me. You really can't beat that. So we got three left. And this homemade machine works amazing. I mean, well, roughly a hundred bucks. I know some guys make their own out of a wooden box, which I probably wouldn't do, but whatever. Um, but that's it. So it's a hundred pieces, just like that. And to be honest with you guys, regardless if it's the Neolese, you know, you still got a single feed that hopper. 
So rather, regardless of if I get a single feed that or a single feed this, I guess I just don't matter. You know, this where this is really going to shine if, if you're doing over 100 pieces. You know, something like, um, you know, I think you can load up damn near 300 pieces of 556 five, in that thing. Um, or I think it'll do almost 150, almost 200 of 308 or 6.5 Cree more. Um, but you can see, let me get you up close and personal here. You can see how consistent this anneal is. So let me grab some of these aren't so hot. And look at that anneal. Isn't that beautiful? <laughs> I mean, it is exactly a quarter of an inch down from the neck. Uh, they are all super consistent, exactly the same because I'm using a machine to get the brass out of the flame within not a second, but probably a half a second, split second. And it is super important that you use a machine of some sort if you're using a flame of some sort to anneal. I mentioned this in the other video, you know, obviously you got salt bath annealing, which I've never done before, but God, I just, the whole idea of using a salt bath to anneal brass kind of makes me irk a little bit. Um, let me get my test brass out of here. So you can see my test brass that I used to set up the flame, set up the timer, set up the heat. And I'm gonna dust, dump that in with my other test brass. This stuff has been annealed so many times. Matter of fact, this is old brass that I overfired and I was about to throw away. So rather than throwing away, I keep it for test brass. And then when this brass is over reloaded, you know, when I'm about ready to throw this away, that will become my new test brass and this will get thrown away. So and you can see up here, I got test brass for everything I reload for in regards to bottle neck cartridges. So 6.5 Grendel, 243, 308, 6.5 Creedmoor, so let me uh, check out some of your comments. You guys got any questions in regards to reloading uh, or anything? And I know some of you guys are just joining me here today. And let me, or this night, I should say, let me just recap what I'm doing here. Let me get this out of the way. So just today I received the PSA 18 inch Cold Hammer Forge FM barrel upper. Five five, six, and there, look at that beauty. Isn't that sexy? <laughs> Tell me that isn't awesome. So, so yeah, that's what I'm looking at. And it's the 18 inch uh, heavy profile. So I have a heavy profile from the chamber to the gas block. And that's medium contour from the gas block to the muzzle. It's got a one and seven twist. So let me show that to you here. And you can see, let me get a little bit closer here. So you can see it's got a FM, FN stamp, 556, five, NATO 1 and 7. And I want to reload for this right away, and that's why I'm doing this right now. Usually wouldn't be reloading and doing live events this late at night. But what the hell, I'm bored, and we're all in lockdown, and we all need to learn from each other. And I am going to let me get some of this crap out of the way here. Get this out of my way. Get that out of my way. You can see how awesome, compact that little annealing machine is. And you can see I put this initially in a steel pan. So I'm going to grab my popcorn bowl here for sizing. Man, look at those annealing marks. They are just spot on. Look at that. That is just downright sexy right there. All right, let me read some of your comments here. Sounds looks like some of you guys are taking off on me. So let's see here. Uh, so Jerry Bear Taxel, way to go. Hey, thank you, Gates Jr. Reload. I really appreciate that super chat, man. That helps out so much. Good old Gates Jr. Reloading saying, keeping up, brother. 
and I hope we are all learning from each other. I appreciate it so much. It helps out my channel more than you know. I can't express in words how the good old YT is no joke demonetizing half of my videos, so it really, really helps. Um, let me see here. Jake Z101. Have a great night, Todd. Looks like he's heading out. Let's see what else is rolling in. Uh, Thor's Axe. I would love to have that thing. And you know what? I might actually do a giveaway on this. Uh, I think when I hit 50,000 subscribers, which I don't see that happen anytime soon, I think I'm up to what? A little over 11,000, 11, 11.1 11 .1 subscribers. Uh, if I hit 50,000 subscribers, I will give that uh, do-it-yourself annealer that I personally made away. And I'll make that promise right now. So hopefully... When you guys win that, that'd be awesome. Uh, hidden steel, <laughs> hidden steel C A C. I know, right? Thor, I tried to buy it from Tom, but he said no way. And man, it's it's my prized jewel, man. It's like one of my first videos ever made, and I think it's got like 140,000 views on the thing, and uh, it just worked so good, and it was so easy to build. Um, so yeah, let's uh, get this stuff sized. I'm gonna get this lubed. And I think you guys have probably seen this before. I just use a popcorn bowl. Let me get you up close and personal again. And I got you in a portable tripod so I can do whatever the hell I want. <laughs> so, so let me raise this up a little bit. Let me clear off my bench here a little bit, guys. I gotta talk somewhat quietly because everyone's sleeping. All right. So, me, this is how, at least how I lube my brass. Now we just... That is what I call a bucket of sexiness. <laughs> All right, so I'm sure a lot of you guys have seen this before, but some of you guys that haven't, what I like to do, and if I, you don't have Imperial Wax, you're not doing it right, and gotta have q-tips but what i like to do is i use hornady one shot case lube and i this is the bomb if you don't have it like i said you're not doing it right so now this is let me be clear on this this is once fired lake city brass that is not fired out of my firearm keep that in mind and this was i have yet to fire this out of any of my firearms this Lake City Brass was fired out of what's well, like a military grade firearm and it's gonna have a stupid headspace on it. And most of my NATO 5.56 or wild chambered ARs, which is pretty much everything I own, I don't own a true 223, excuse me, chambered AR, they they usually fire form and eject at roughly 1.456 inches. Well, this military brass jacks at damn near 460. Let me grab a couple other pieces here. Just grab a few miscellaneous pieces here. And this one, 14459. Like I said, this is out of not my firearm, but a military grade firearm. Four, five, seven. Let me just move you guys up here. What the hell? So, four, four, five, seven. You know, this could, all this is probably fired out of different firearms too. Like this one's got a four, six, two. Look, that's a huge headspace. Guarantee that one was fired completely different. Out of, look at this one. Four, five, one. That's actually under what I want to bump mine too, that's weird. So when it comes to Lake City Brass, it wasn't fired out of your firearm. I will literally measure every single piece, at least, at least on the initial sizing of the first reload. After that, and it, it's fire formed to my firearms chamber, then they're all set in fire form to that particular firearms chamber. And I'm sure some of you guys have seen this before, but I'll show it again for some of those guys that haven't. 
I've seen this before, but I bought this 1,000 pieces of Lake City Brass. Like I said, this wasn't fired. This brass came from this box, mostly from Someone probably bought this from the military, drums of it, literally pallets of it. And I bought this from a guy off of Facebook, a thousand pieces. I think I got this shipped for roughly 60 bucks. It was an absolute steal. You know, I'll probably get about six reloads out of this with a semi-automatic. If it was a bolt action, I'd probably get 10. Um, but none of this was fired out of my firearms. It was fired out of a military grade firearm, most likely like an M16 or a SCAR or something like that. When you're initially sizing that brass, it's got a generous headspace. Why? Is because they're probably getting fired out of a fully automatic firearm that has an insanely generous headspace. When you're firing that ammunition out of a military grade firearm with a generous headspace, it needs to be generous so that chamber is heating up and expanding and contracting and cooling down. That person's life is on the line. It needs to make sure that it functions, and that's why they put an insanely huge headspace on it. And brass that expands out of damn near all of my firearms, fire forms at damn near 1.453. And let me just double check something here. I got this one piece of brass. You guys have seen this before. I know this one piece of brass is exactly 1.750 inches. And I use this to make sure that my calipers are reading true and the battery's not going dead. And right there. So 1.750, so I know my battery isn't going dead. My calipers are reading true. Let me put my bump gauge back on. And I know some of you guys have seen this a billion times. I don't use a case gauge, I use bump gauges. And get this zeroed out. Make sure you're using an amble too. Gives you a lot more accurate readings. And I'm literally going to measure every single speck of brass in this bucket as I size it. It's a pain in the ass when you first size Lake City brass because of it. But once I get past that first initial sizing and then I fire out of my firearm, when that powder ignites and that bullet goes down the rifle's bore, this brass, it's brass, it's malleable. 5,000 PSI inside that casing when that uh, powder ignites, that brass expands and it, it expands and seals off in the, uh, that particular firearms chamber and it custom fire forms to that particular firearms chamber. It's called fire forming and it will spring back a little bit, maybe a thousandth of an inch, not much, but it fire forms and custom sizes to that particular firearm. And usually what I will do is that piece of brass that ejects out of that, my firearm, once I fire it, that's like gold. I'm gonna grab that piece of brass and I'm gonna measure its headspace. Matter of fact, when I go out to the range and shoot this ammunition, I'm literally gonna take my calipers and these bump gauges attached to my calipers and I'm gonna measure that very first shot. I'm gonna grab that piece of brass very first shot I take out of this brand new firearm. Let me show, the, show that bad boy to you again. This one I just got right here. I'm gonna bump, I don't know what the fire form headspace is yet. I've yet to shoot it. So what I'm going to do, and I've purchased factory 5.56 ammunition before, and I've measured numerous brands of 5.56 NATO ammunition, their headspace, and it's usually, at least with my bump gauges, not your bump gauges, roughly about 1.456, maybe 1.457. Uh, no, I'm sorry, uh, 1.453, maybe about 1.452. And then when I fire that, that brass will expand, usually about three thousandths of an inch, and then when I get that piece of ejected brass, I'm gonna bump that back 3,000 inch. But like I said, this wasn't fired out of my firearm and this headspace is, every single piece in this bucket was probably from a different firearm and they're all over the place. And that's why it's kind of a pain in the ass. You know, this one's 
four, four, five, nine. This one is four, five, six. Damn near what mine ejects out at. This one here is four, five, seven. This one here is four, five, nine. So it's kind of a pain in the ass. But like I said, bump gauges don't truly give you the true headspace. All your bump gauges do is prove to you that you've bumped the brass. That's it. If you were to go out and buy this exact same set of calipers, the exact same set of head ga bump gauges, you know, the exact same thing I have in my hand right now. And I, I measure this with my setup and this reads 1.459. And I was to package up this one piece of rash and ship it to you and you had the exact same calipers and bump gauges and you put that piece in your setup, it might not read the same. It'll be close, but it's not gonna read the same. All your bump gauges do is prove to you that you have bumped the datum line or the headspace of that brass, and that is it. It's not giving you the true headspace, but it's damn freaking close. Like I said, all it's doing is telling you that you have exactly bumped that brass a certain amount from fire form, and that is it. So. Let me read some of your questions here. Uh, and uh, Maverick Anglers, if you are new to the game, uh, I'm gonna do you a huge favor here, my friend. Go to my page, go to playlist, and then go to the ultimate reloading playlist. I literally have dumped all my knowledge into this playlist. And there is a one to nine start to finish reloading series. And in the 10th part, we shot those reloads. And not only was in this series am I reloading 5.56, five, but I'm also reloading 308 or 7.62. And I tell you, if you watch every second of this 10 part series, the first part of this alternate reloading playlist, and you still don't know how to reload, you just don't want to learn. <laughs> so, and then it doesn't stop there. I still have the first streamed live event I did, shooting those reloads from the live event. I got my do-it-yourself brass annealer guide, how to make it, how to use the annealese, uh, how to mod it out with a readout, how to build my bench, how to use tumblers, quick tip and saving method uh, tips for reloading. What else? The FW Arms decapper. Uh, I give you a tour of my reloading room and I show you the equipment and why I bought that equipment and why I personally use that equipment. Lyman Cyclone case dryer, which is right over there. And my stainless steel tumblers. And which we recently just got doing is reloading for the 6.5 Grendel, the uh, first and second part. And like I said, if you're new to reloading and you at least watch the first nine parts of that ultimate reloading playlist every single second, and you might have to watch it twice. You might have to watch it three times, maybe four times until it really sinks into your head if you don't know how to reload after that, you just don't want to learn. And a lot of guys ask me, hey, what, what equipment should I buy? And I instantly tell them, just watch the damn series, all nine parts. Because not only are you going to learn how to reload, but you're going to learn why you're buying that equipment to reload. It's a big difference there. You're learning why you're buying that equipment. And don't ever buy a kit. You never want to buy a kit. Um, you definitely want to part it out. That's my opinion. So, um, so let's see here. Uh, do, 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 do. Uh, Jason Lopez dropped another uh, super chat. Man, I really appreciate that, guys. I uh, really appreciate that, Jason Lopez. Keep it up. Great work, buddy. I love it. 
Um, let me read some questions here before we size this. Um, matter of fact, before I read your questions, let me lube this first because I like to let this sit for a little bit. Um, actually, when I get done uh, lubing it, I usually hit it with an air hose, which the directions clearly say that on the one shot case lube. Uh, but my family's sleeping right now, so that's why I'm speaking really quietly. <laughs> and so uh, I'm going to let it air dry, and while it's air drying, I'm going to read your question. So let's, let's get this going. And make sure you don't use too much lube. If you use too much lube, you're going to get what's called hydraulic dimpling of your brass. You'll literally, if you start to see little dents forming in the side of the case body or especially in the neck, it means you're using too much lube. And this isn't your happy place. You got to make sure you chill out with the lube, guys. I know some of you guys get a little excited and you got to use an insane amount of lube. <laughs> but this is the time at the place. <laughs> so, um, so anyway, um, so what I do is, like I said, if you're not using pearl case wax, you're not doing it right. And I take a little bit of that case wax, and a little bit, I'm not talking a lot. Like I said, chill out with the lube, my friends. And you put that in the palm of your hand. It's a good old hit and steel CA's dropping another super chat there. Thanks, my friends, and heck yeah, party. <laughs> and make sure you shake this up really good. And just because I'm using lube and I'm using this motion doesn't mean, well, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> so, uh, so we're going to shake this up pretty good. And I got a little bit of that Imperial Case Wax in the palm of my hand. So I'm going to spray this. And you're just going to lightly dust this. We're going to work this brass with that hand. Man, i got to be quiet. This is way too loud. My better half is going to kick my ass. <laughs> We're going to lightly dust this again. You can see I kind of work the brass with my fingers. Lightly, I usually dust it about four times. This depends on how much I'm reloading, to be honest with you. You don't want to douse it, that's the key. I know, it's just probably going to come down and chew us all out. Right, let's do this once more. I'm going to do this once more and be done. Alright, and that's it. It's really that easy. And then we're going to take care of the inside of the case mouth as we reload with Q-tips and sizing wax. And I'm about to show you that here in a little bit. We are not screwing around, my friends. So let's, uh, let me let that brass dry. You got to let that brass dry a little bit. You got to let that loop set up. And if you are just joining in on this adventure at night, what, damn near 11 p.m.? Jeez Louise, I don't know what the hell I'm thinking, <laughs> to be honest with you. Girlfriend is gonna come down and kick my rear end. Um, it's like he's junior reloading saying, hey, here it comes. Jason Lopez saying, Todd's in trouble, people. And I probably will get my ass chewed out in the morning, but oh well. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, thank you so much for those super chats, guys. I mean, it really is uh, an amazing incentive to keep this going when the good old YT is not making it easy on us gun tubers, especially us reloader tubers, if that's even a word. Um, Jaybear Tactical saying 16 ounce of 99% isopropyl alcohol and two ounces of liquid lanolin. That's, yeah, that's awesome. I definitely heard of people doing that. Uh, ba, ba, ba. So like I said, if you guys are out there, you're new to reloading, check out my playlist area. If you don't know how to reload after that, you just don't want to learn. Now let me get this clear. I'm only showing you how I reload. I'm not telling you that's how you should reload. <laughs> I gotta get that out of the way. All right, so 
Uh, Maverick Anglers is saying, which reloading books do you recommend going forward, basic 101, to which you feel are very up to date? Okay, so I have never read a reloading manual. And I, it's probably bad advice. I've learned everything I know way back, and I would say way back in the day, probably early 2000s from Sniper's Hide. Matter of fact, let me bring that up because I am just full of knowledge <laughs> and, and I gotta let this, uh, I need to let this lube dry anyways. Uh, let's see here, so Sniper's Hide. And go to Sniper's Hide. Matter of fact, I think I have that saved, I think. Uh, Sniper's Hide, yep, I got saved. Jeez, I should know that. This forum is an insane wealth of knowledge, my friends. And I am going to show you the holy grail of reloading information. <laughs> if you go down in the forum section of Sniper's Hide, and there's a section called Sniper's Hide Reloading, and there's also Sniper's Hide Reloading Depot. And if you click on this, there is an stupid amount of information here in regards to reloading. Matter of fact, if you, you can see a lot of these are pinned. Here's mine, I actually have my um, couple of my videos pinned in here. Uh, this is a stream, the first streamlined event that I did. And I also have the very first how-to reloading videos that I did eons ago. You can actually see them in here. Um, part one, part one, brass organization and decapping. Part two, brass, brass cleaning. Part three, crimp primers and the reloading journey. Part four, annealing, showing you how to use this, which I just did. Headspace overview and primer pocket uniforming, which I'm about to show you here in a little bit. Head sizing, brass prep, the finishing of the brass prep, brass trim, deburr, chamfering, done with brass prep hell. Uh, seating primers, seating depth overview, uh, dropping powder and seating bullets. And then we literally take the ammunition out to the range and shoot it. You can watch it hit paper and both 6x5s with the 556 and the 308, both averaged sub MOA on all six five shot groups each. I believe the 5.56 five, averaged 0.7 minutes of angle for 30 shots shot in a row, six total five shot groups. Um, oh, before I forget, let me back this up. And if you have any type of Say like you go to the reloading depot section in here. See like you're reloading for six millimeter dasher. Look at it. They have literally every cartridge known the man in here and people are dumping their pet loads into this. You're like, man, I don't know where to start out with 6.5, uh, 6.5 by 47 Lapua for pure example. There's eight pages of this and people are literally just dumping their pet loads of what works best for them. Type of brass, obviously they're using Lapua here type of bullets, the amount of powder, the primers they use, the freaking is an information overload if for the, even the advanced reloader. And man, I tell you, if you watch my start to finish reloading series, get your feet wet. I'm actually telling you not to do exactly what I do. I'm telling you to find your own journey and just use what I do is a starting point. Find your own journey. Because your equipment is most likely gonna be different than my equipment. But you can at least watch that video to understand why you're buying that equipment. I wouldn't say my equipment is the a starter kit, and I advise you not buying a kit. You want to part it out. And I would say my setup, what you guys have watched in my reloading series over the years is probably the bare minimum of what I would suggest buying. If you want the very best of the best, I probably wouldn't get a Hornady lock and load. I'd probably get a Dillon 1050 for progressively reloading. 
you're just doing precision only, um, single stage, I'd probably get a red and turret press. Rather than getting charge masters, I'd probably get something like uh, A and D 120i type setup. Um, what else? You know, rather than using world's finest trimmers for trimming brass, you can spend a little extra money, maybe get a growled triway trimmer, stuff like that. So, um, let me read some of your comments here. I have definitely been blabbering way too much. <laughs> um, let's see here. So Thorzak says, ha ha, she comes down there, look at her and say, I am reloading, woman. <laughs> it's what men do now. Go back to sleep. Make me a sandwich. <laughs> yeah, I'm probably. Yeah, I'd probably. I'd probably go to sleep and never wake up. Is what would happen. <laughs> uh, so a good old jinx soldier running the house saying, "Damn, late to the party." Well, you did miss the annealing, and if you are late to the party, once this live event series is done, you can. Um, watch this video from the start once it's uh, done with a live adventure here. Gates Jr. Reloading is show me that lube motion <laughs> again. Yeah, whatever, man. Uh, so Jinx so just says, swore I never used damn spray lube ever again. RCBS, case lube, blah, 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 roller plaid for me. I mean, like I said, it's all about finding your own journey. It really is. And I'm not gonna say what you do is any better or worse than what I do. It's just, everyone's got a different way of doing things and you know you watch all these guys reload and of course everything they do is the right way of doing it and this is like i said this is just my way and you can take it for what it's worth <clears throat> um problem is i'm running out of h335 <laughs> man that powder is definitely hard to get um so otter is saying just want to thank you for the effort time and great explanations keep up the great work sir invaluable for us newbies take it easy and take care of yourself and your family and all the best thanks my friend i really appreciate that um so marcus is asking is the case like trim to 1.756 okay to fire um so there is let me read the rest of your question here sorry I have, I have 25 reloaded, 223 rounds stored away, never fired. Recommend to trim to, yep, 10 thousandths of an inch, which should be 1.750 from the max of 1.760 case lengths, and that's exactly right. So maximum is one point. Matter of fact, I will show you. I have, there's usually bookmarks in here. And... Da, 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 da. So 223 Remington, it's right here, and you can see maximum case length, 1.760. They're recommending that you trim back from maximum, which is the gold rule. Usually from maximum you trim uh, 10 thousandths of an inch, so they're recommending 1.750. <clears throat> so with that being said, um, I usually trim a smidge above recommended trim length. So if they're recommending 1.750, I usually just go a smidge above that. So 1.751, maybe 1.752, somewhere around there. Um, I think 1.756, I think that's what you said. Uh, yep is probably a little too much. You gotta remember you're only four thousandths of an inch away from maximum. And the worst thing you can do is, if you are at maximum, 1.760, or God forbid you're over that, and you reload that ammunition, you put that in your rifle's chamber, you are and will damage that chamber. If it only happens once, you're probably okay, but if you repetitively do that, it's not gonna be good. So I would probably trim that back to more like 1.750 is the gold standard. You can't go wrong with that, but you might want to go a smidge above that. At least that's what I do. 1.752-ish, 1.751, somewhere around there. So when in doubt, play it safe. Um, see the rest here. You're gonna take, 
<laughs> I, that was actually my goal. Is your six covers crown for the most live events this week? You know, he, he is the master of the live event adventure. And uh, maybe I, yeah, I'm going to steal that son of a bitch, that's for sure. <laughs> Uh, that's top line equipment for loading Jason Lopez says so yeah everyone's just got to figure out their own adventure that's for sure um, so Jinx told you saying fave trimming technique believe it or not is the Lee case gauge trimmer for, and a drill fine bad brass easy yep so Uh, so Jinx Soldier saying it would be good to mention case gauges. And uh, if you've watched my videos in the past, you'll know I don't use case gauges. I've said this in the past, I'll say it again. You reload for your rifle's chamber. You do not reload for a case gauge if you're going for precision ammunition. If you want more spray and pay, prey ammo and you're doing something on a progressive press and you want something that works in a wide array of firearms, then yes. Use a case gauge, but if you are going for the absolute most precision, you definitely want to reload for your firearms chamber. And I, if you're asking my opinion, I would use a bump gauge and not a case gauge. I sold my case gauges a long time ago. And if you watch my video series, you'll know that brass consistently, and I mean to the thousandths of an inch, consistently fire forms to your particular firearms chamber. And I will bump that brass from fire form, 3,000 of an inch for semi-automatic, maybe one to 2,000 of an inch for bolt action. If you use a case gauge, or if you do something stupid, like take a die and screw it down until it touches a shell plate and give it a quarter of an inch, you very well could be bumping that brass 10 thousandths of an inch from fire formed. Well, you keep on doing that over and over and over, and by their fifth reload, you are going to exhaust the life expectancy of that brass, no doubt. And you will eventually run into a couple situations. And the worst one is case head separation. Because you bumped the brass back 10,000 of an inch, and then you fire formed it back 10,000 of an inch. And then you bumped it back 10,000 of an inch, and you fire formed it back 10,000 of an inch. Because you're using a case gauge. <sighs> Not saying case gauges are wrong. I know a lot of people use them, I just don't, and I, my methods show that, and if you watch my video series, you'll know why I don't use a case gauge, and I can't explain all that again, because I feel like I've explained it a billion times, but uh, watch my video series, series, you'll know why I don't use a case gauge. Now, with that said, even pistol, I don't even use a case gauge with a pistol. I use what's called the plunk test. That's, once again, precision ammunition for a pistol, and I would be more tend to use case gauges for pistol ammunition, something like 9mm, 45 ACP, 40 Smith & Wesson, blah, blah, blah. Something that doesn't have a bottleneck on it. That is when I will use a case gauge, maybe. But otherwise, I'm still using the plunk test. I'm using the physical barrel uh, of my pistol to determine if the headspace is correct. So, that said. <laughs> Um, so let's, uh, Thor's X, very few channels like his because of his way of explaining stuff, and I appreciate that, my friend. I try my best to explain it in the easiest ways possible for the new reloader to understand. So, um, and I can't dump all my knowledge here even in the next two hours of test, two hours of this video. You really need to go check out my playlist area, and that Literally all my knowledge is dumped in there. Like I said, if you watch that playlist area and you still don't know how to reload, you just don't want to learn. So let's get this sized. And I think this uh, lube has dried enough. And this is going to suck because it's, like I said, it's been once, it's once fired out of someone else's firearm, not mine. The most likely military grade firearm. And the headspace on every single one of these pieces is all over the place. And I'm going to try my best to consistently bump this brass, and this piece just needs to get thrown away because it's underneath what I'm going to bump it to. Um, so yeah, anyway, I use a horny lock and load press. I like to over cam my press a little bit, not too much. You definitely don't want to over cam it too much because you can damage the linkage on your press. 
Let me, I gotta clear some things off here, sorry. Give me a second to get situated here. I wanna get it so you guys can read your own comments. All right, what is a case gauge? Uh, I do have some case gauges here for pistol. By the way, if it's a case gauge or dies, I like to store my dies. Some of you guys have seen this before. I'll say it again. I store my dies in a Ziploc bag doused with WD-40 and a little bit of a zip uh, cardboard, chunk of cardboard or a note card or something, and you'll never get a speck of rust on your dies and even case gauges. I do that too. So if you've got high humidity areas, you don't use a dehumidifier, and I don't use the dehumidifier because I think they're a fire hazard. Um, you can see, I've never, I've, I can't remember the last time I used these, no joke. I am not kidding you. I bet it's been years. I bet it's been two years since I've used these. And look at that. Do you see a single speck of rust on that? Like I said, I haven't touched these in over two years, I bet. Because this inside of this is doused with WD-40. Um, but this is a case gauge, and what it does is it tells you if you're reloaded ammunition. This is for pistol. This isn't bottlenecked rifle. It tells you if your reloaded ammunition is to SAMI spec. It's absolute bare minimum of meeting headspace. And you put your reloaded ammunition in there and it tells you if it rides too high it's not good if it rides too low it's not good it's got to fall between those two spots there and you make it in pistol and rifle so but like i said when it comes to comes to bottleneck rifle i use a bump gauge i do not use not use a case gauge like i said i reload it for my rifles chamber i don't reload for a case gauge all right with that said let's get this going so my woman doesn't come down here and kick my ass um i gotta get some water <laughs> uh, so if you guys got any comments or questions let them rip i'll try my best to answer them X caliber USA LLC is rolling in the house saying hi Todd. I think I missed you. Ratchet man's rolling in the house. Who else is rolling in the house here? I think I missed. If I missed you, make a comment there. I don't. I don't, I don't want to miss a single person here. All right. So <laughs> if you want consistent headspace bumps. Uh, at least with my press, horny lock and load press, and these dies, your dies and your press is probably going to be completely different, so make sure you read those directions. At least with the horny lock and load press, at least what I do is I like to overcam my press a little bit. Let me make sure I get the handle in the picture here. So that is just as important. Uh, Excalibur, you say, just, just don't offer to kiss me. <laughs> That's awesome. So, at least to get started, is I screw this down until it touches the shell plate, and that's at least where I start. And I've reset this to show you guys how I set headspace. Now, like I said, I'm going to have to physically measure every single one of these pieces because this is Lake City brass. It wasn't fired out of my firearm. And in order to do that, I need to verify every single piece. And it's a pain in the butt, but it's something I gotta do. So, so I'm gonna grab one piece here. We're gonna measure the headspace on it. And like I said, our goal with my bump gauges, not yours, remember bump gauges don't tell you the true headspace. All they do is tell you that you have bumped the brass. So lock that in your brain. All bump gauges do is tell you that you bumped the brass. It doesn't tell you the true headspace. So, with that said, <laughs> so, uh, with my info card, my target headspace, you guys need to remember this number, 1.453. So just remember those last three, 
0.453. That is the target headspace. Okay. And I take my popcorn bowl here and I actually set it right in my bad, bad brass bin. Say that five times fast. You can see it's down there. So I just set this right between my legs so it's easy to reach. Hopefully, God, it doesn't fall in my bad brass because that would suck. <laughs> so let me make sure I got the press handle in here so I can prove points. I love proving points. So let's see here. All right. So let's see. Let's get this out of the way. Get everything set up. Got the uh, imperial case wax. Got the Q-tips. Got my calipers for my bump gauge. It's got the correct, making sure it's got the correct headspace gauge in there because that would be very bad if it didn't. So you can double check your headspace gauge. And we are doing 223 Remington. So here it lists the different headspace gauges. And you can see for 223 Remington, which is right here, we need to use headspace gauge insert A-0.330. Can you guys make that out? So 223 Remington, headspace gauge 330. So I'm gonna double check this. And sure enough, it says 330, 0.330. And that's the insert, this is the body. This is the anvil. This is the headspace gauge insert because you can actually use these exact same tools for bullet comparators. So you can actually put a bullet comparator in here too if you want to check your uh, jumps. You want to check the amount of jump that you have, especially for something like a bolt action. It's not so important with a semi-automatic. I'm not saying it isn't important, but it's typically used for bolt action. Um, so, so just saying, oh man, you bought a new upper, congrats. Isn't that awesome? It's so special. If you guys are just joining us here, um, I'm just letting you know that I just purchased, uh, I actually didn't purchase, being upfront and honest here, PSA, Palmetto State Army sent this to me for T&E purposes. I didn't pay for this. So I'm just being straight up clear with you guys. This is the next firearm review series. So Palmetto State Army sent this to me, and this has the 18-inch heavy FN cold hammer forge barrel. Um, I could probably bring up some more information on this. Uh, let's see here. Come on, baby. So it's got a... 5.56 NATO chamber with a 1 and 7 twist. You guys make this out. All right. So here's my 6.5 Grendel. Here's the new upper that I just got. These are pictures. I can show these all day long. I took off the bird cave break. I'm trying to get a APA little bastard break for this new upper. Um, I am using the PSA nickel boron coated Carpenter, I got a picture of that, somewhere's here. Yeah, so I'm using the premium 5.56 nickel boron coated with Carpenter 158 bolt, no logo on that bad boy. I actually have a video series, I ripped that out of my PSA 10 and a half inch AR pistol. And I just took it out of that and I'm gonna put it in this new upper. And because that upper, which is this, PSA 18 inch cold hammer forged, 5.56, one and seven twist, 15 inch handguard. It does not come with a bolt carrier group nor a charging handle. So I just ripped that out of my 10 and a half inch AR pistol. That's a 5.56 NATO chamber. <clears throat> and yeah, this should be freaking awesome. I can't wait to get going. That's why I'm doing this so freaking late at night, pissing off my woman. <laughs> and I am using my F Cancer lower uh, it has the uh, 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 Hyperfire competition trigger, which is the best trigger in the world. They are very expensive. 
Uh, and I got the Luth MBA3 carbine stock on it because this has a carbine tube on it. So I'm using the Luth MBA3 hyperfire competition trigger with a PSA F cancer lower and the new upper. And initially I'm not going to use the PSA 1 to 6 branded scope with their QD mount. Um, I'm actually going to take my 4 to 16 Vortex PST off to do an initial load development. But once that load development's done, then I'm going to use that scope. And this is going to be more of a DMR type setup. So it's going to be flipping awesome and I can't wait. <clears throat> so, all right, enough of the blabbering. I gotta get going for this dry lube. Freaking sets up like cement. So, uh, let me check out the chat boards here. Uh, some of you guys are staying up way too late, just like me. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Am I missing anyone's questions or concerns? Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba, I think that's it. So let's get going on this. Um, so I reset this. All right, so I'm going to grab one piece of brass here. <clears throat> Let me get some more lighting in here. All right, so this one has a pretty good headspace on it. This first one out of the gate, and this has 460. Remember, we need to go down to 453. Four, We're not using case gauges. We're not guessing, because we don't guess in my reloading room. <laughs> so we need to bump at least this one piece back seven thousandths of an inch. So, and remember, all Initially, when you first get Lake City brass, it's a pain in the ass to resize because they're all over the place. Sometimes you're bumping the headspace back so much, like seven, eight, almost ten thousandths of an inch, you might have to run it through the die twice just to get the desired headspace, the consistent headspace. That's why we just annealed. Um, so with that said, once you've fire that those reloads out of your particular firearm if custom sizes to your firearm and then you only need to bump it back three thousandths of an inch it's a very small amount compared to what i'm about to bump this seven thousandths of an inch so what you need to do is initially condition your die with imperial case wax and you get the smallest amount of imperial case wax on the tip of that finger when I say small, it's minute. It's a very small amount, and we're going to cover that first piece. I'm going to cover the first piece, the entire outside of that, the body, the shoulder, the neck, and then I'm going to grab a little bit. When I say a little bit of on your Q-tip, it's just like this. You ready? It's just like that. It's not much. You don't douse this thing. You're just covering it just a little bit. <clears throat> and I run that in the neck because that's going to condition the pin of the imperial case wax. I don't do that on every piece, just the initial piece and probably every 20th piece. And I, as I'm reading that headspace, I got to do it on every single one of these as we, we go and it's a pain in the butt. But once I get past that and I fire this once in my chamber, I only have to bump it back three thousandths of an inch, and it's, I don't measure it like that. I, I might measure the first five pieces, and then I just give her hell. But at least in this situation, I got to. So, so this is gonna go in. Now, remember that one piece was 1.460, do you remember that? So 1.460. And I don't think I bumped the headspace gauge because all I did is I touched that shell plate and maybe gave it a quarter of a turn. And you haven't watched me measure this yet, have you? No, you haven't. And I'm almost going to guarantee that that headspace grew. If you don't bump the headspace, that headspace is most likely going to grow. The brass needs to go somewhere. Um, what's happening, I get my damn case gauges out of the way here is the body's put back in the spec. The shoulder should be bumped back, at least for a semi-automatic. You know, if it's a bolt action, you'll have to do maybe one or two thousandths of an inch. And sometimes some guys neck size only, they don't bump it back at all. But anyways, we're gonna put that neck back in the spec. 
But the main thing is we're putting that body back in the spec and you're pushing this up in the die. The, push, the die is pushing down because of the ram and you're pu pushing this all back in the spec and the brass has to go somewhere. The brass is malleable. It will literally flow inside of the die and that brass will squeeze up inside of that die and if you don't touch the datum line, the datum line is the mid, mid distance between where the shoulder meets the neck and the shoulder meets the body, the halfway point. And that is called your datum line, your headspace. If you don't touch that and you don't bump that back, your headspace is most likely gonna grow. And I'm about to prove that to you because I'm pretty confident that I didn't even touch that. Now, remember that was 1.460. And it didn't grow a tremendous amount, uh, but it did grow. So 462. Like I said, I love proven points here. And that's why I don't use case gauges. And I definitely don't do something stupid like just screw down my die till it touches the shell plate and give it a quarter turn. Because it's, you're, if I was to put this in my firearms chamber, it would 100% get stuck in my firearms chamber. There's no doubt about that. And the only way I'm going to get that freaking thing out is I'm going to have to mortar that charging handle. I'm literally going to have to grab the charging handle, slam that butt stock down while I'm pulling on the charging handle down on the bench and yank that freaking case out of my rifle's chamber and hope to God it comes out. And sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it rips the freaking lip right off the base and it's not good. So anyways, we need to continue going until we reach that. 1.453 so we're going to screw this down a little bit if you don't lube your brass your brass is going to get stuck in your die and you're quickly going to learn how to use a stuck case removal tool and you don't want to do that trust me so now we are finally moving the datum line or the shoulder of that brass remember we started at 460 we didn't bump the brass so the headspace actually grew to 462 but now that die is in contact with the headspace, the datum line, and it's literally moving that headspace down. And we moved it four thousandths of an inch. But we need, remember, remember I told you, that, remember this number? 1.453, that's our target headspace. We still need to go up three thousandths of an inch. So I'm actually gonna run this again, because when you tremendously resize brass, especially Lake City brass, where you're, you're resizing it damn near 8 thousandths of an inch. Sometimes you gotta run it through the die twice. It's not like you're resizing brass that's fired out of your firearm. You only have to bump the headspace back 3 thousandths of an inch. You're bumping it tremendously, and sometimes it has to be ran through the die twice. And I've literally had headspace so generous where it's over 10 thousandths of an inch, you gotta run it through three times. And it is that stubborn, so. I'm actually going to run this through again without screwing that die down. And I think that was four, five, six, was it? And it's still four, five, six. So we're going to keep on screwing this down until we hit that four, five, three. So we're getting close. I don't have to screw this much. So. We are getting close to that target headspace. We're at 454. Four. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm not going to continue with this piece. I'm actually going to grab another piece. I'm going to come back to this one. And the reason why I do that is because I, I want to make sure I don't overshoot it. So I'm going to, and you can see I'm slowly moving consistent running of your handle and consistent running of your ram equals consistent headspace bumps. You notice I don't slam this down, and you notice at the very end, it, it watch this, I'm doing this with my pinky, and it's hitting the overcam right there, and then I'm overcamming, 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 stop. I don't press down on the handle. The second it hits the bottom of the overcam, and I don't let it slap home. If you let that slap home, your headspace is gonna be off. The second I carefully hold that through the overcam and the second it hits bottoms out at the bottom of the overcam, I stop and then I slowly back off. If you yank this back off, you are going to yank the shoulder back up 
And like I said, it's all about consistently running your press and ram to get a consistent head space bump. It all works together. So let's, let's measure this again. So I've been blabbering too much, see where we're at. So we're at, we're still at that four, five, six. So I, could, I don't think I moved that. So let's st screw this down just a little bit. It ain't gonna take much. So you can, I'm overcame it, overcame it, overcame it, overcame it, stop. Back it off. And we are really close, four, five, three. So to make sure I don't overshoot, I'm actually gonna go back to this other piece. Now remember, I'm just initially setting up this die. I'm not doing this with every piece, I'm, just, I'm still setting up this die. Once I get it set, then I'm gonna set it and forget it. So you can see we're right there. That's why I went back, because this one's four, five, two. Now you're never gonna get your bump headspace perfect. Your goal is four, five, three. As long as you stay within reason of that, of plus or minus one thousandths of an inch. I try to shoot for half of that actually, but if you can stay within that, that's the name of the game. And that's why I go back between these two pieces while I'm initially setting this up. I'm actually gonna back this off now. I kind of overshot it. And I'm gonna run this and double check this again. And you can see we are right there, my friends, four, five, three. I'm not guessing, I'm not using a case gauge. I'm reloading for my firearms chamber. I'm not reloading for a case gauge. So let me, yep, that's four, five, three. So I'm gonna put both of these pieces in here and I'm gonna grab another piece. And I'm gonna slowly run this, bottoms out at the bottom of the overcam. Slowly bring it through. And right there, four, five, three. Let's try it again. And this is what you call consistent headspace bumps if you want precision ammunition. And you only get this because I anneal every single time. <clears throat> and I consistently run my press handle. Four, five, three. Slowly, slowly, slowly starting to overcam. Going through the overcam, bottoms out. Bring it back. And sometimes with this stubborn Lake City brass, if you let it sit at the bottom of the overcam, it sometimes helps. Now you can see, I might have to run this through twice. It's four, five, four. You'll probably be okay with that, but I'm gonna try this again. And you'll probably be right at four, five, three. And if this comes out good after the next piece, I'm gonna lock that down. Now you can see I'm spinning the brass. I'll actually spin the brass while it's in the bump gauge while I'm pressing them together. And right there, four, five, three, five. So that's close enough. Let's try another piece. And if this is good, I'm gonna lock this down. So it's slowly going down. I start to hit the overcam. I'm going through the overcam, slowly going through the overcam, and the bottom's out. Don't press down on it. I'm gonna let it sit there and back this off. Let it sit at the bottom for a little bit. Sometimes you don't have to run it through twice. Because remember, this is stubborn Lake City brass. It's not fired out of my firearms chamber. So four, five, three. So one more piece, and then I am gonna lock this son of a gun down before my girlfriend comes down and kicks my ass. So, slowly, slowly bottoming out and back off. So, I might prove a point to you guys of why you don't use a case gauge and you reload for your firearms ch chamber and not a case gauge. So, now I'm gonna lock this down. So we're gonna go through the press, go through the press, go through the press, I'm hitting over cam. Slowly going through over cam, stop. Now I'm gonna screw this lock nut down and I am gonna lock this into place. I feel confident that that's where we need to be. And I'm done. Now I can set it and forget it. So, now while you're doing this, you're gonna notice that you might have to recondition the die. And I'm up to about 10 pieces. 
But every 10th piece, you might have to recondition the die. You don't want to overcondition it because you do, you're going to overshoot your headspace again. And you can see that the lube is starting to wear out in my fire in the die. I'm pushing this together and I'm spinning this. It's at four, five, five. Now watch this. I'm going to put a little bit of reconditioning that die, and you're going to watch the headspace go back to where it needs to be. What I just got done showing you. And I'm going to get a little bit of, on the Q tip here, get the inside. Remember, don't overdo it. This isn't Thor's axe Lubathon. <laughs> and you're gonna watch this. I guarantee you, my friends, this will be right at 453. It might even be a little over because I just just did it and it's right there. 453. 4535. Because I just reconditioned it. So I'm actually going to run that through again. It's kind of a stubborn piece of brass. Probably had a humongous amount of headspace on it. Because this is once fired Lake City brass. It's not fired out of my firearms chamber. And man, that is perfect. You notice I did not touch that die. That die was locked down. So let's let's grab a piece here. Miscellaneous piece. We're going to double check the headspace on this. We're starting at 458. So you can see that. So we're, that means we're going to be bumping this five thousandths of an inch. So that's four, five, three. So we bumped that one five thousandths of an inch. Let's grab another piece, see if it's different. <clears throat> so this one was the same head species. Let's grab another one that's way off. So that other one we started at. Was it? We started on the other one at uh, four, five, nine. So this one is four, five, eight. So let's try this one. And that's why Lake City brass, when you first size it, is a real pain in the butt on the first initial resizing. That's exactly it. Four, five, three. So I'm just going to keep on going here. Let me read some of your comments. If you guys got any questions on reloading, better let them rip. Because I don't know how much longer this is going to go. Because my girlfriend, or my other better half, is probably going to come down and whoop my butt. Because <laughs> it is 11.39 p.m. <clears throat> uh, let's see here. So Excalibur USA LLCs, I got Redding, Forrester, Ellie Wilson dies from a bottle of my cartridges. And I'm a huge fan of Redding dies, especially the Micro Cedar dies. Those are absolutely awesome. We have the best of the best. It's, in my opinion, it's Redding. But I tell you, I get, I get consistent results with Hornady. This is a Hornady die. I'm showing you guys right now how consistent, um, how much, how consistent my headspace bumps are. Um, so four six zero. So four five three. Make sure I'm not missing anyone's questions and comments here. Thor's Axe saying apparel case wax is amazing stuff, and you're damn straight it is. <laughs> Thor's Axe Lubathon. <laughs> uh, let's see here. So yeah, we're gonna just keep on going here. And sometimes when I get to this point, I'll actually somewhat use the progressive nature of the press. So I'll put in one. You gotta be careful when you're doing this because you quickly uncondition the die. And I'm gonna measure every single one of these. This is a quick way to uncondition a die, but I'm gonna try it. <clears throat> So you can see I'm now using the progressive nature somewhat. I'm going to catch this piece as it falls out. And I'm going to measure it. So. Four, five, three, five. Four, five, three, five. Four, 
This one's right at four, five, three. That's typically what I'll do when I get to that point. I'll just kind of progressively resize at this point. Even stubborn Lake City brass. It wasn't fired out of my firing chamber. Now after this, I might have to somewhat recondition this die a little bit with Imperial Case Wax. So, if you guys are out there watching, what type of uh, presses do you guys use? And are, are any of you guys absolutely new? So if you're new out there, make a comment. Say, hey, I'm totally new. I'm learning. Or if you've been around the block a few times, let me know what kind of press you're using. Make that comment in the comment section there. <clears throat> so four, five, three, my proven points here, how consistent this is because we annealed. So this one's a little over, that's all right. That's four, five, two, five. So as long as we stay within a thousandth of an inch of that four, five, three, that's what we're going for. But if you can get every piece exactly four, five, three, that is your main goal. So John Parsons saying, I am new. So I'm glad you're learning, my friend. Four, five, three. Nobody judges here. We're kind of like, my reloading room is kind of like the fitness planet of reloading rooms. No one judges. <laughs> so four, four, five, three. So I'm gonna stop bugging you with my consistent headspace pumps. Uh, so Maverick Angler saying new Ben around it but now ready to make that leap and i hope you're learning something my friend like i said check out that playlist area i've literally dumped all my knowledge into that area and like i said if you don't know how to reload after watching those you don't want to you don't want to learn how to reload Can't say I've ever tried to read comments and size brass at the same time. So we can double check all of these. So we're four, five, two, four, five, three, four, five, three, four, five, three, five. Four, five, three. Gosh, man, that is so consistent. So lead mining 44 saying lock and load classic 550 and 650. Man, <clears throat> I loved it. Man, I think if I was to start all over, I'd probably start with Dylan. But to be honest with you, my loads are good enough, at least with this uh, horny lock and load press. I just don't feel the need. I should probably get this light in here. That'd probably help to upgrade to a Dylan. I'd love to though if I ever won the lottery. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but who knows? All right, so let's check this out here. Four by three. Now this one's four, five, four. I'm actually gonna run this one through again. It's been a little stubborn. So you can see now my headspace is starting to veer off. It's four, five, four. This one I ran through twice. I went down to four, five, three, but you can see the die is starting to become unconditioned. That's a good sign that, yeah, no. Four, five, three, five, and yeah, four, five, four. So you can see that the die is starting to become unconditioned. So that's where I am going to ever so slightly grab another piece of brass here, recondition that die with new, fresh Imperial case wax, otherwise known as 
Thor's lube. Thor's axe lube in a jar. So I just reconditioned that and hopefully I didn't overshoot it with too much Thor's axe lube. So this is being really stubborn. Sometimes you got to make sure this is screwed all the way in. Oh, this one's being really stubborn. And that's where I might, this is where if you get a really stubborn one, if you run it through, through twice or three times, that where I'm, I might give it a slight nudge at the bottom. And <clears throat> let's see how this one works. It won't go past four, five, four. And there it goes, four, five, three, five. So like I said, these pieces, are gonna most likely expand to about four, five, six, four, five, seven-ish, four, five, three, five. So it's only gonna expand three thousandths of an inch. And the name of the game here is, let me measure this one more time. Yeah, four, five, three, five. <clears throat> so someone else fired this piece of brass out of their firearm it custom sized to that individual firearms, military grade, most likely fully automatic type firearm headspace of a, a ginormous 460 headspace. And I now I just bumped that down seven thousandths of an inch to 453. <clears throat> and most likely when I fire it, it's gonna re-expand to 457-ish, three thousandths of an inch. Now. The name of the game is, is you want that brass to seal off in your firearms chamber as soon as possible. If it has, if you do something like just screw the die down and then give it a half a turn, and you might do a 10,000th of an inch bump or use a case gauge and do minimum Sammy spec and you might have 8,000th of an inch bump, that brass literally needs to expand 8,000th of an inch to seal off in the firearms chamber compared to my technique of using bump gauges of where it only has to expand three thousandths of an inch to seal off in the firearms chamber. That means there's gonna be less gas escaping. Your SDs and your velocities will become way more consistent and consistent velocities, better SDs, will mean consistent velocities and consistent points of impact as that bullet flies through the air and hits the paper. And that is the name of the game when it comes to precision, at least with a semi-automatic. Now, with a bolt action, you might only need to bump the headspace back one thousandths or two thousandths of an inch from fire form. And some guys don't, don't, don't even do that. They just do neck size only. And I've seen guys do this before is when they won't even use a bump gauge. What they'll do is they'll set their bump gauge off to the side and they will insert that piece of brass into their, that particular firearms chamber and they'll run that uh, bolt home. And that's the luxury you get with the bolt action. You don't get that luxury with a semi-automatic because obviously with semi-automatic, the bolt is pushed forward by a spring. You don't feel that tension. That's why you need the generous headspace of at least 3,000 to 5,000 of an inch headspace bump. You're more concerned about function and making sure it doesn't jam. But with the bolt action, you feel that resistance through the bolt's handle. And you can play around with that when you're trying to fine tune your headspace for that particular firearm. And you run that piece of brass to your die, like I'm showing you, and you insert that into your firearms chamber. And I'd love to show that to you. And I used to show that to people back in the day, but I can't do that live. And you put no headspace bump on it, it has zero headspace bump and you run that bolt handle and you you run it home and you try to lock it down and you can't lock it down. <clears throat> it's because you have no headspace at all, no headspace bump. So your headspace might actually might have grown like I've shown you because you didn't bump the headspace at all. So what you do is you take that piece of brass out of your firearms chamber out of that bolt action and you re-lube it back up to make sure it doesn't get stuck in your die. And you give that die a twist. A little bit of a twist, not much, just a thousandth of an inch bump. And you run that piece of brass to your die again. 
and you clean off that lube so you don't get lube inside your firearms chamber and you put that back in your bolt action and you rerun it and you try to close that bolt again and now the bolt closes before it didn't close at all but now it will close but it's stiff it's so stiff that you can't close that bolt and you take that piece back out and you lube it back up and you turn your die a little bit and you run it back through that die and you bump it another thousandths of an inch and you take that piece of brass out you clean off the lube you put it back into fire your bolt action and you run that bolt again and now you can tell that the bolt is now starting to close pretty easy it's still a little bit of resistance um, but it's you know that might be something like a bench rest rifle shooter's dream it's, it's really tight that means he's got very little to no head space. He might have no head space, maybe a thousandth of an inch head space. But say like you're hunting and you want to, you're want you more concerned about precision, uh, not precision, more about function. Or maybe you're a PRS shooter and you might want more of a two thousandth of an inch uh, bump. And you take that piece out, run it through your dive, put it back in and you bumped it in a thousand inch now you can tell that the bolt closes fairly easy it's a little bit of resistance but it's more set up for a prs shooter's situation he's, he's concerned about function but he also wants precision but now you want to go hunting and you're more concerned not about bug hole groups but you're more concerned about minute of deer so you might want to bump the headspace back more like a semi-automatic with a three thousandths of an inch bump. So you run it through your die again, bump it another thousandths of an inch, and you put it back in, and now you can tell that bolt damn near closes by itself. You don't even have to close it with your hand. And that is the name of the game. It really is. And I, I hope I'm proving this point to you, my friends, and why I don't use case gauges. If you've watched my reloading series, I've proven that point time and time again. Um... I don't think I'm going to keep you guys here for the rest of these 80 pieces because I'm sure I'm pissing my better half off to something fierce. <laughs> I'm going to make sure I bump this. And I can tell I bumped this because I have bump gauges and I'm not using a case gauge. So I'm going to put this back in. If you guys got any questions, you better let them rip here soon. Jerry Bear Tactical saying, Todd, it's been a great chat heading to bed. He says, everybody in the chat room enjoys the rest of your evening. Stay safe. And you guys stay safe also. I uh, hope you guys are staying at home, doing your social distancing thing. And the best thing and way to do that is the reloading room. <laughs> if you guys got any questions, um, especially if you're new, anything, let them rip right now. Otherwise, if you're just joining us, we are, at least I am, Reloading for this new firearm adventure that I'm about to go on and that's what I do That's my passion and it's my dream And it's what I like doing is trying to squeeze out the most amount of accuracy I can get out of a firearm and I just received this PSA 18 inch cold hammer forge FM barrel upper and that is the new and next firearm series and it is going to be spectacular I trust me on that my friends especially with this new range that I have. I have a new private range and I think some of you guys have seen that and I got a bunch of steel gongs coming in. I got a two inch, a four inch, six, eight, all the way up to 12 inches. I'm going to spread that out. You guys have seen my rimfire know your limits and if you haven't seen that, um, I was in one of my most recent videos. I I think it is, where is it? It's right here. So the Ruger 22LR, RPR, 50 yards, 100 yards, Mark IV at 50, 20 yards. as a rimfire, Know Your Limits target, but I have a Know Your Limits target on steroids coming in, and it is for high power, high power cartridges, and it is flipping awesome and you guys are gonna love it and I plan on taking that bad boy out to range 300 600 yards where you're gonna shoot that bad boy at know your limits target at range and it is gonna be flipping awesome I can't wait um, so Jason Lopez is saying thank you Todd I hope you're learning something my friend I hope and if you guys got any questions 
don't hesitate to send me a message here on YouTube or on my Facebook page. Uh, Buckeye Targets is saying, yeah, I'm going to the range tomorrow too. And I plan on going to the range tomorrow and finishing off the PSA 6.5 Grendel Firearm Series, which is these reloads. If you guys have watched that series, it is rather epic. And I show you how I am reloading for that firearm. And also, that being said, the results of that load development, and that is a half minute of angle out of a PSA 6.5 Grendel firearm that costs less than 400. <clears throat> and I hope I'm proving to you guys that I am taking away the late night live crown away from is your six covered <laughs> so well i hope you guys enjoyed this and i got more resizing and headspace bumps to do about 60 times before i throw this in the wash I'll probably actually have to do that in the morning otherwise i will really piss off my other half well, don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. Hit that notification bell. Become a Patreon. It helps out more than I know. And I definitely appreciate those super chats. Man, those really, really help. I can't express in words how much those super chats help. And that's it. And I will see you guys in the next video series. And it's coming up soon. And it's going to be epic. See you later.